I'm cool, oh my God, you be Ain't no work now, I'm sick of God, real quick now, but I'm not the fool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my God, I'm sick of the fool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Roger. Reverend Roger. Well, uh, hey, friends, fiends, and sex machines, it is I, once again, out of the blue, Prince, along with Poopster, for the Power Hour on Thursday evenings. Yeah, that that was weird music, uh, Grimnir. Actually, um, that's something I made with uh, an Armenian rapper, my friend Vosk. And uh, I made him just, I said, just say Roger as, as many times as you possibly can. Um, and that's what came out of it. It's totally weird. And that's what it is. And we obviously have our dear friend Poopster. Hello. 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 The outspoken... One, the outspoken people hacker, hacking you as you speak, or as he speaks, I don't know, something. Right. That's right. That's right. So, like I said, well, we're here. We were supposed to be on last week, and we we try to do this every week, obviously, um, but what happened was... Uh, uh, I'm still operating on a uh, uh, shaky monitor situation, um, display situation. And last week, as soon as I got my shit ready, um, it didn't want to work. And by the time I got it working, it was already like 45 minutes in. So I'm sorry. I, you know, I know you guys were probably chomping at the bit. No, I doubt it. But, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, obviously we, we generally start out with cryptocurrency, so what's up? Uh, not crypto, I don't think. <laughs> I think it actually went up a little bit. <laughs> it did, actually. We, we saw it, it, a bit of a rise. Yeah, yeah it, it rise a little bit. Um, yeah, um, like two days, I think it hit like pretty, like a little yeah, I think we're, we're at seventy three now, which which is, you know, I guess okay. Not too low, I guess, but no, no. The ultra low, I mean. Um, uh, oh, speaking of uh, granddaddy. Yeah. Well, uh, no, go on, go on. No, um, go ahead. I was just saying, uh, uh, the big daddy's, uh, you know, staying at seventy three, but uh, the ultra hitting their low, and then. Kind of slightly higher than the low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that that will displace Bitcoin as the um, you know as as the predominant mover of this market, and every other coin seems to only get its value because Bitcoin has the value it does. I mean, if Bitcoin were to drop to two thousand, let's say, uh, I don't know, what's what's another leading coin? Name one. Name uh, a coin. Monero? Monero? Don't name V-Chain. No. VTC. Uh, no, that Vertcoin. How about that? Yeah, like Vertcoin. Like, so if if uh, if Bitcoin dropped to two thousand dollars, I'd say Vertcoin, for example, w- would drop. I don't know what the price is right now, but it would drop to you know a, a fraction uh, in the same the same regard. Um, what would be interesting about that is because I'm thinking about it now in my head. Maybe that needs to happen for the market dominance to shift because we all know Bitcoin is, you know, it is what it is, but it's not, it's not great. You know, yeah, it's a settlement layer. It is. And that's fine. Um, but maybe that, that, that's what has to happen for, for another, currency to take hold um i doubt it I yeah doubt i don't it. think either yeah i mean it's just that once you get to a certain point with margin trading and 
everything around that and futures, then there's an ecosystem that supports supports it, whether whether it's relevant or not. I mean, um, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Anything mm-hmm. could happen. This is right. this is the nether regions. Well, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention Craig Wright because he's been in in crypto news for the past few days. I've been seeing him fly up on crypto Twitter uh, recently and a lot of shit. So, uh, well, there was something earlier that uh, oh, let me pull up the before I mention this article. Um, I, I guess Craig Wright is saying now that. He's going to oh, what is it? He's going to release. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. Well, yeah, Craig uh, Craig Wright is is purported to release the uh, the secret keys for Satoshi's wallet uh, in XXX hours or whatever the fuck. Um, oh, really? Yeah, let me find the article. He said that. He's going to do it, huh? I thought I retweet, t- retweeted it, but I guess I did not. Um, here's another one. Craig Wright claims to be the creator of Zux. What the fuck is Zux? Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. No, like Z-U-X. <laughs> like Z-O-X. Z-U-X. No idea. Oh, Z-O-X. No, Z-U-X. Z-U-X, oh, the first pro- provably zero-sum copycat made a s- <laughs> meta scam. It's an it's a ERC token. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, it's, I guess that's just troll. We won't, we won't go there. Oh, where is that article? I want to find it because it will lead me into this next one, damn it. Keys. Crypto Twitter is crazy, man, you know? Yep. I've been trying to infiltrate it um, since we got our new account back. And uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. And I'm trying to... Here we go. Next week, Craig Wright is set to receive... The keys for for more than one million bitcoins. The only evidence backing Wright's claim is a two two uh, two thousand eleven email from Dave Kleiman. Um, so that's the mining partner, isn't it? So yeah, but how how is he set to receive these keys? Like who's so he's going to get them from Dave Kleiman? He's dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, is that like a dead man switch or something? I mean, or maybe he's just sending him himself, you know, as a yeah, oh god, the, the other guy's wallet, you know, or keys. That's, it's a weird fucking. It's a weird thing, man. Here we yeah. go. To whom it may concern, Doctor Craig Wright, I acknowledge the trust and the transfer of bitcoins to this trust. I have full control of all, all software and the keys used to manage Bitcoin as this date, blah, 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 2011. I have agreed that I, David Kleiman, shall become the trustee for the transfer of the Satoshi I have received from Craig Wright. What? Okay. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean anything, if you ask me. Um, man, it's just fucking fodder, honestly. It's bullshit. Didn't they have some kind of settlement about that? Probably he sued. He's the uh, the brother of the Dave Klingman or whatever. Sue his ass um, and want like a certain percentage or something, like two billion dollars worth, something like that. So I mean, that leads me into this. Uh, I mean, Craig Craig keeps going on. It's it. This is an article posted yesterday. Um, so. In response to motions and objections in the Kleiman case, uh, the legal team presented some pretty shitty arguments in the trial recently. So, um, for Craig Wright's behavior, re- reasonable and in good faith are not one of them. No, that's true. Um, so, the, the, that's what the legal team is, is purporting, uh, apparently. Um, what, do they, what do they have here?
Yeah. I don't know. This is just a clusterfuck. It's, just, it's not even worth mentioning. We're like, we're bringing attention to these terrible people by, by even talking about them. But yeah. we, we want to do it because we want you to know to not fucking go, not, not work with scammers. Uh, fuck Bitcoin Cash. Fuck BSV. Do your research. Don't buy pizza cards for doctors. <laughs> you know. Even though doctors need pizza too. Yeah. Yeah. It's all crazy. It's all cray cray. The nether cray -cray. regions. We're venturing into the nether regions. The soft spots. Yes. Anyways, so, <clears throat> our friend uh, Grimnir actually, uh, yesterday, alerted me to a brand new Doomsday Asteroid, which led me to yet another Doomsday Asteroid. So, let's talk about the recent Doomsday Asteroids. Poopster, are we all going to die? Yes. A+. plus. He knows. He's on the fucking point. Yep. We will die. <laughs> we will die regardless of the Doomsday Aster Asteroid or not. Um, but they're trying to keep us in suspense. So, what do we got? And we'll, if it happens, well, we know. That's the key. Oh, okay. Actually, this is the same one, the same article. I, I didn't realize that today was considered Boxing Day as well. Uh, so today, we had or are having the Doomsday Asteroid um, approach, approach us. Um, yeah. So, batten down the hatches, smoke crack, because it's the end of the world and we're all gonna die in, well, no, it was at 7.54 a.m. <laughs> I don't know what time zone that was, but whatever. I don't know why they're taunting us with all this stuff. I mean, like, it's, it's, there's... Well, I do know why, because fear drives consumerism. People spend more, people buy more, people drink, people whatever. I think that's a a major indication as, as to why the United States is the way it is today, because people are unhappy and scared, so they turn to things like drugs, opioids, alcohol, gambling, etc., etc. You know how it is. Yep. The end of the world always comes tomorrow. That is truth. Thank you, Grimnir, for that wonderful statement. <sighs> it's coming tomorrow. I mean, we had this asteroid come today, but the next one, we're all going to die tomorrow. So, live like it is the best day of your life, or something. Something inspiring and useful. So, anyways, anything to add to that, Boopster? I agree. Just uh, live this your best life, and uh, but I wouldn't go too far with it. <laughs> what yeah. if it didn't happen, right? What are you well, gonna do? We talk about this. I mean, I've talked about this on multiple occasions that. Uh, you know, there are so many fucking things to be afraid of. I mean, Christ. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Like, my my roommate was standing outside yesterday, and some guy drove by in a bike and asked him if he had a gun that he could buy. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, so there's, well. there's, there's fucked up shit out there, but if we thought about it, we wouldn't leave our houses, and there'd be nothing to do. Well, yeah. You know... You can't scare everything, right? Gotta live it. Well, yeah. Burp. Gotta live it, but, you know, uh, I guess gotta, just like everything, gotta do it with limits. That's true. You know, it's like, yeah, so go out, have a fat steak, you know? Just live up, but, you know. Meat is murder, bro. <laughs> That's just an example I'm trying to say. You know, some, <sighs> some people want to treat them with a nice steak to, to live life, you know, to its fullest kind of thing. 
I'm just giving an example. I know there's a lot of vegans out there. No. And the, or <laughs> there are. Nice but they're not book. listening to this broadcast, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay to eat fish because they don't have any feelings. I don't know. Even plants <laughs> have feelings. Nobody knows what that's from. Come on. It's Nirvana. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I'm playing to a, nine, a dead nine. crowd here. Poopster, Poopster's not a grunger. He was listening no, to I, Millie Vanilli. <laughs> I did like Millie Vanilli. Girl, Vanilli. you know it's true. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, I, I, don't, I think that's a different artist. I don't know. That is the right artist, by the way. It is? It is. Fuck, man. You're on point. I used to like you them. I'm like, what? They're frogs. <laughs> Did you listen to Boys to Men? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I, I did listen to Nirvana, okay. not the whole album, but just a few songs. Yo, they they were my shit back in the day, man. There's there's a song called "I Hate Myself and Want to Die" by Nirvana, and oh, actually, that- um, "In Utero" was originally supposed to be titled "I Hate Myself and Want to Die," but the label would not allow it because it was, you know, yeah. not a fun title, right. Well, he did kill himself, so... That's debatable. Debatable? Yeah. It's very That's debatable. True. I mean, very debatable. if you look at... Uh, like, Courtney Love literally called El Duce from from The Mentors. And I don't know if you know who The Mentors are. They're, they're a punk band from, uh, from L.A. area. And they dress in executioner's masks, and they're pretty um, debaucherous. I mean, El Duce... Uh, she called El Duce and, and uh, asked if if he would kill Kurt Cobain. El oh. Duce went on point and t- took lie detector tests and everything. Uh, and then he got hit by a train mysteriously um, weeks later or months later or whatever the fuck. Which is weird. Wow. Yeah. So there's just a lot of weird things. I mean, he probably did kill himself, but that doesn't make any of the events that led up to it, any stranger in my mind. Right. But, True. You know, we're all troubled. I'm, I'm probably just as troubled as he was. But, uh, you know, shit. And when you're into dope that much, it's it's pretty crazy, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. At least you don't like Taylor Swift. I, I hate Taylor Swift. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Very bad. You know, to be fair, I'm going to give her some props because she actually has some talent. She can sing, yeah. she can play guitar, and she can write music. Not the stuff that she's been putting out recently is fucking horrible, and most of the stuff that she's gotten popular popular for is is absolutely horrible. But there is something there. Like Miley Cyrus, for example. And I've mm-hmm. talked about this with Moose Girl, actually, uh, in the channel here. Um, man, she can sing. She's got a really nice voice. She, but uh, these people get eaten up, chewed up, and spit out by the pop machine. And it's all about marketing, and they use these people basically as, as instruments. Um, and they market them like, like they're objects, you know. It's, it's, it's whoring. They're like pimps. So, yeah, they're they're popular right now, so they gotta milk every ounce of it out. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, did you see that Black Mirror episode with uh, that Miley Cyrus, uh, coincidentally, starred in? I don't think I've seen that one. I only seen like two seasons. Is this in season three? Ah, uh, it seems like three or four. It's after the the Builder Snatch one. Oh yeah, I didn't see it yet. I didn't watch the the Builder Snatch shit, but. I don't know. Apparently it's good. But I've watched all of the other episodes. But anyways, in, in this particular episode, they, they uh, Miley Cyrus is a pop star. Well, I forget what... I think... What was her name in it? The character's name? I can't remember. Anyways, so they create this AI instrument, basically, that is her personality. And uh, eventually... Eventually, they, they create a hologram of her and kill her and try to kill her off to be a perpetual cash cow. 
and uh, and it's a pretty good you know representation of of how the industry works with marketing and everything like that. Because uh, if they could fucking do that, they they certainly would, you know. Um, yep. And what's interesting about the episode is that uh, um, all of the songs that that her character sang throughout the episode were Nine Inch Nails songs, but redone with with pop lyrics. Yeah. So it, it was actually pretty funny and entertaining. Um, it got mixed reviews. Some people didn't like it because it was kind of like a kid chase, like. Um, I don't know. It was kind of like childish in a way, but I I got it. I got what it meant. Anyways, so enough about that. I wanted to talk specifically about uh, a platform tonight that some people may or may not know called Discord, and I don't want to rip into it too bad because there's there's some things that I think I would like to do that I don't want to quite reveal. Not to Discord, but like Discord. Anyways, so Discord is a communication platform, uh, not unlike Slack or Keybase, or, well, it's unlike Keybase, or any of the other private company platforms that are out there. So, Discord was originally made specifically for gamers as a a platform for communication um, within gamers so they could do clans and teams and have fun and etc., etc. For whatever reason, somewhere along the line, the crypto community and other communities have migrated to Discord uh, or use Discord in some fashion because of the traffic that's on it. And actually, in in the Litecoin IRC and uh, Discord, there have been, like, fights about it, like, brutal fights about which is better, Discord or IRC? IRC. I'd say (laughs) IRC as well, but... Honestly, you cannot compare the two. They're not even on the same level. Like, yeah, it's it's not even a worthy argument. So you're gonna fight till you're both blue in the face, and, and you're not gonna win. And the other person, the other person probably won't even understand the the argument that that you're trying to make because uh, it's not even about it. That you know, it's anyways. So Discord's privacy privacy policy uh, specifically. Is, is what I'd like to highlight. Discord is a privately owned company. Uh, I don't. I forget who, who it's owned by. I just call it Discord. Anyways, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because they have a page on their site. Let me find it. dot com slash open source. Okay, uh, what? fuck you, web browser. I have it pulled up somewhere else. Okay, open dash source, gotcha. So, Discord, a closed source, privately owned communication platform for gamers. They have a page for open source projects. Here's what it says. Discord open source. We made Discord for gamers like ourselves but other engineers have found it to be a great tool for their open source projects. And then they have testimonials. Oh, look at that, from from Ubik. We really enjoyed the swap to Discord where we can provide an intuitive new member experience while protecting existing members from phishing and scams. The key is we expand our bot capability to blockchain... What the fuck does that mean? That's a useless testimonial. Yarn package. Discord helps us to get in touch with Yarn's contributors and empower them to become maintainers in the process. Irrelevant. I don't think these are valid testimonials. And I'm going to get into why this this angers me so much. React Flux. Discord is the easiest platform to join. All they need to do is provide a name. (laughs) 
No, actually, um, some of them service provide. You have to do a number, a phone number. There, there's, um, it's quite a bit more than that. And here's one Augur, which we've talked. I've talked about Augur before. Augur is a um, is was originally NXT, um, and it split into Augur and Waves platform. So Augur says Discord has many of the same features as Slack. How? Because they were on Slack before. We are all on Slack and Supernet. Um, they gave us better community moderation tools. Security features such as link checking and validation is built in. So. All this is like, I don't know, something. Because they're trying to propagate this platform and become universal and expand. And let me try to have, figure out how to word this, because it's, it's technically spyware. It collects, Discord collects all information that passes through their platform. So... And it's completely centralized, so you know commun- communications have to go through their servers. So they've confirmed in the past that they've they've record everything essentially, and of course it's the, the same the same uh, 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 excuse that we do it for purposes like uh, improvement and things like that. But then I've seen other notifications that they also share their data with uh, with the U.S. government, for example. Um, it's probably owned by the NSA. The, I'm going to actually talk about something else that's owned by somebody else later, but it could be. I doubt it, but they might be teamed up. But they, uh, they confirm in their privacy policy they collect uh, IP address, UUID, email address, all text messages, all images, all voice over IP data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nice. It's just default. So, <clears throat> the open source community needs to move away from this. However fun it may be, or useful, I don't know. It just sounds like it's a pitfall. Fall in the pit. Right, right. They should definitely not get in. using that. That's it's like go against their ethos. Well, I'm I'm getting into this too because I've been doing um, social engineering uh, for the past few weeks uh, on Discord, specifically on on non crypto servers, and um, I I've been trying to discover why people enjoy enjoy the platform so much. And I'm not going to get into that because it's kind of a trade secret that I'm working on for something else. But I understand it now. I do. And uh, I've actually met some, some cool people there uh, in these, these servers. And uh, if I can, I'll take them with me to Valhalla. No, we're not going to die. Not yet. <laughs> But, um, yeah, Discord. I mean, there are a lot of better... I mean, these open source communities would work way better on Keybase than than Discord. So I don't understand that, unless they share HD video with each other, which I doubt. I don't know. It's crazy, man. Cray-cray. Which leads me to my next story actually. And these guys are calling it that, too. Uh, do you know about TikTok, Poopster? Yes. These, it's, it's owned funny. by the Chinese or something, isn't it? Okay, well, it's funny. This this New York Times article is calling it Totok, T-O-T-O-K. And I, I was watching um, the news earlier, and they're saying Totok as well. So they just fucking ran with it. Toe talk. Let's talk about toes, motherfucker. <laughs> maybe it's another app. No. Well, maybe it is. Let me look up. Maybe there is actually a toe talk. I mean, I've never heard of toe talk as opposed to, <laughs> to TikTok. Yeah. Holy shit, it is. I thought it was TikTok. Wow. I'm fucked up. 
Is it like a like a competitor to TikTok? I don't know, man. I'm I'm fucking delusional now. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. Who's TikTok owned by? Let's see. Yeah, they're Chinese. I, I've never met anybody who's used Toe Talk, and I've never heard of Toe Talk to this day, because fuck, man, I <laughs> I thought they were just misspelling TikTok. The world's a fucked up place, man. But TikTok True. is shit, anyways. It is. It's like it's just a they're using it to do their little like. Yeah. Dance videos. It's like thingy. Snapchat or whatever the fuck else, you know. I get it. I don't know. So toe talk. <laughs> Stay away from the toes. Apparently. Apparently that's real. It wasn't a typo. So, anyways. Yeah, TikTok is actually owned by uh, a Beijing company. By Bite Dance. Good for them. You're destroying our world by dance. <laughs> Fuck off. No. Thanks, you mean. Yeah. What people will do in the quest for profit. <sighs> well. All about the profits. The profits. The Speaking prof of profits in religion, well, not really really. I guess religion, maybe. So... Uh, we've talked about the God Helmet. I think I might have brushed on the God Helmet here before. Um, have I? Boopster, maybe? I don't believe so. Hmm. Well, God Helmet, you know, I don't recall. So, there's a, a recent study that's, that's uh, purporting that almost all near-death experiences have these have a common thread of the, of the same visions in common. Um why I'm being redundant there. Never mind. But Oh, maybe you have talked. I think it's... Well, I've talked about near-death experiences, I think. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we've, we've had similar brushes with death, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, a, there's, there's a, a team... Where are they at? Uh, let's see where they're located. Anyways, in a sample of adults... Over a thousand from Norway, Denmark, and Germany, ten percent of people reported having a near-death experience. So, okay, there we go. They also found that the experiences had several weird commonalities, including dark tent tunnels, bright lights, spiritual sensations, and conversation with the dead. Um, so, this is August 2019. So. Okay, so they, they, they created a scale called the Grayson Near-Death Experience Scale. I, I didn't actually read far into this article. So, Wow, so they, they have this quantifiable checklist for people with near-death experiences. So um, first question is, did time seem to speed up or slow down? Um, were your thoughts sped up? Did scenes from your, from your past come back to you, etc.? So it, it, it goes on. Which, uh, that's pretty interesting. I guess that's the, the um, checklist they gave. So, they're able to... Hmm. Hmm. Near-death experiences. So, they, they're bringing it down to that the brain... Actually, DMT, and you guys know about DMT, right? No? No. Nope. You don't know about DMT. Okay. Nope. DMT is in everything. Okay? Pretty much everything. Um, actually, the it's a, it's a hallucinogen, okay? And it's very spiritual. It's, it's a drug, okay? So, mm. but it creates these insanely spiritual experiences, uh, very moving. Uh huh. So, they're attributing these visions, maybe, to DMT, because the brain seems to release it as a protectant. 
uh, as as you pass to the next life or nothingness, as it were. Because mm. reports of DMT produce the same sort of effect, basically. Um, separation from your body, etc., etc. Entrance to other places. And here's another thing, interesting. So, in the study sample, people who had um, a sleep condition called REM sleep intrusion were 2.8 more times likely to have a near-death experience. And you know what REM sleep is, right? Yeah. Okay. So your body, it's... You know, have you ever heard of sleep paralysis? Yes. Yes. Uh, It has nothing to do with this. I just think it's interesting. Um, In REM sleep, it's a form of sleep paralysis, but you don't know what's going on. Um, Apparently, in people with uh, REM sleep intrusion, that experience may happen while they're awake. And uh, which is actually very similar now that I'm finding out here as as I read on to um, sleep paralysis. So these people will have REM sleep as they're awake, which which is pretty interesting. So those people are more likely. Anyways. Yeah. That's a pretty interesting uh, link. And what I wanted to bring that into was the God Helmet. Have you, and, uh, have you heard of that before? I have not. Is that kind of like a, uh, a helmet that will induce? It will turn yeah. you into God, my friend. No. Or uh, cause trick your brain into thinking that you are visiting God. Maybe. Right. Well, it's, uh, it's obviously a helmet. Originally called the Corin helmet. Corin Octimate, octopus uh, after the guy who made it, Stanley Corin. So it was uh, Corin, uh, a neuroscientist, uh, uh, created to study creativity, religious experience, um, and s- stimulation of the temporal lobes specifically. So when you put this helmet on, it, it essentially creates an electric field. Right. Let me read more into here, cause I, so, I, so I don't trip myself up and say shit that isn't true. <laughs> I mean, I know about this already. I just, I just want to provide you guys with the correct information. Yeah. So neural stim- stimulation with low intensity magnetic fields. I just wanted to verify what created these uh, purported, uh, reported sensations. So they're very weak signals, and uh, most of the subje- subjects. Ex- experience, you know, mystical experiences or also alt 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 altcoin mystical experiences or altered states while wearing the god helmet. And um just like Rat City, it's criticized by by everybody in the scientific community. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me see here. I mean, there are some groups that experience no effects at all. Um, so I, I wonder really if, if you know, a near-death experience is not universal. It like, might be based on uh, your religious belief. That, that's a good, uh, yeah, possibility. I don't I've, know. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's your individual religious. experiences that create what your brain does at the moment right. of death or, or when it's faced with that. Hmm. That's something to think about, indeed. Yep. Because we're both near-death experience type dudes. Well, at least I am. Yeah. I almost died, too. I know. We talked about it before. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, anyways. Who knows? God helmet. I'd like to try one. Try a God helmet one of these days. Someday. Are they doing a study? Maybe you could uh, sign up. I doubt it. No? 
Maybe. Yeah. Maybe uh, in the next, before the next doomsday, doomsday asteroid comes, we can we can try it out. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what do you think, Poopster, about anything? What is on your mind? What is on my mind? Hmm. I don't have anything on my mind. I try to cleanse my mind at night. I want to dig into to what makes Poopster tick. Okay. Let's let's talk about it. Okay, let's do it. Do you like toe picks? Do you find toes attractive? No. How about nostrils? Nope. Fuck. Okay. Next. Belly buttons. Do you prefer innies or outies? I prefer innies. Okay. We have the necessary information to create a psychological profile for Poopster. That is all. Thank you. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so... Flatliners. Actually, yeah, that was an interesting movie. It was kind of like off kilter, I think, where they went with it. Grimnir is mentioning Flatliners. You ever see that movie? Yeah, a long time ago, though. I think they made two of them, actually. Did they? I think so. I don't know. Like a remake or like a... Like a remake, like a yeah. Maybe I'm sequel. wrong. Whatever. I mean, that was an interesting uh, premise, but they went way too into the horror fucking shit with it. They could have been more skilled. I don't know. Anyways, this is something I saw last week. It uh, was interesting. That uh, a Chinese hacking group has found a new way to bypass two-factor authentication. Oh, I saw that, yeah. You saw that? So... I didn't read it, but I saw, like, the headline. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, a group with uh, links to the Chinese government, if they're Chinese, most likely they're going to have links to the government because everything is state-funded there. They've been uh, accused of hacking networks worldwide and are bypassing 2FA in the process. So, mm, let's see. They target uh, web servers as the first point of entry. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. So once they're in there, they install shells that spread through through the network, and uh, they seek out passwords and administrator accounts to to basically, um, you know, utilize virtual network credentials and more secure access. So, uh, so yeah, they're they're gaining access to to VPN accounts that are protected by two FA. Um, it's a, a complicated process to, to hack a two-factor authentication account. And apparently they've found a brand new way by stolen uh, stealing RSA Secure ID software tokens from, from uh, oh. compromised systems. This is why tokens are bad, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a different token than, than crypto token, but... It's, are you talking about, like, the... Uh like those uh, number that you that get ran, well. Yeah, two factor authentication. The one that you have on a different device that yeah. you need to log into a specific site. You know, you you use two factor authentication. Come on. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to see if that's the the one they were using. Like, uh, oh, oh, two authenticator. Is that what you're talking about? Like, no. Well, I think this is for for a bit of a, a more complicated um, uh, network. Okay. But. Mm, Secure ID is something that I'm not totally familiar with. Let me look it up. Yeah, I mean, RSA Secure ID is something that's used more on, on uh, a an enterprise level. Well, actually, right. let me see. No. Looks like Microsoft has it. Yeah, there. Microsoft have one. It's called Authenticator, and then there's a 
Google Authenticator. I have that on both on my phone. Well, yeah, that that's that's uh, me too. Well, I don't have Microsoft's, but um, uh, RSA Secure ID um, is, a, is a security suite, I believe, separate from yeah. those those entities. It's uh, I'm reading their website here. One modern authentication solution. So maybe they have a a token process that needs to be reevaluated. And a lot of these these articles are, you know, FUD in a lot of ways. So maybe they were doing that, but shit, they're probably not going to be able to do it anymore. Um, right. <laughs> if they're being hacked. <laughs> yeah. But it's still interesting. I mean, and honestly, in reading this article, the method, yeah, sure, it's, it's interesting, but hackers are, are going to are going to find they're engineers you know they're going to find ways t- to do things that are uncommon it's uh just the name of the game yeah yeah yep not- hack the gibson hack the gibson yep yep so yeah anyways real cool few more things to go through, I guess. Let me see what I got. What do I got? Oh, this is interesting. Uh, for any uh, United States people. So, um, the FDA has officially raised the uh, minimum age to purchase any tobacco project from eight product from 18 to 21. So, you can no longer buy cigarettes at 18 anymore. And I, I applaud that. Which, you know, and this is really crazy because this administration is so fucking crazy. And it's, I see so many parallels between Nixon and the Trump administration. Not yep. really, but Nixon actually did some decent things for, for, for the United States. Um like policy wise anyways uh, i don't i don't know if this had anything to do with it just because trump signs it doesn't mean that he has anything to do with it but i don't know oh uh what was this? okay so that was included with the the 1 1.4 billion reserved for the <laughs> building the US Mexico border wall and um 25 million for gun gun violence research okay whatever just lump it in there with the rest of them. Uh, man, the news. Fuck, fuck the news, man. Shit. But, anyways, I think it's a good thing. Kids don't need to smoke. It's bad. Smoking. Smokers are jokers. I'm a joker sometimes. I smoke crack. No, not really. Don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rocking Have you uh, do you smoke poopster? You, you said you've never done drugs, right? I've not never done drugs. No. Nope. You've only done flaca and jenkum. <laughs> no. Well, I tried uh, smoking at eight. Um, I also drank. You tried smoking uh, when you were eight years old? Yeah, I tried it. Yeah. Dude. What was water pipes? <laughs> Who are your parents, man? I don't know. Like I'm They're just gonna okay. try smoking. I'm eight years old. You know, maybe they're good parents. I tried it. I didn't like it. I didn't, you know, I didn't so continue with it. So your parents got you to smoke weed? They gave you a bong and said, here, toke up. No, it's not weed. It's uh, it's it's like a... Uh, oh, hookah. What else? Southern water pipe kind of tobacco. You mean like hookah, thing. right? I mean, uh, shisha. Huh? They call it shisha. Yeah, it's kind of like a hookah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, no, that's different, yeah. I mean, no, I get it. It's, it's kind of a cultural thing. Yeah, it's not the. That my parents didn't pass it to me. I just kind of like, um, I don't know. It was a it was like an older people. I was just, I don't know what I was doing, but uh, yeah, it's like you wanna wanna try it? Like, okay. Wanna hit it, bro? Yeah, pretty much. Here, bro. Okay. So, the beer I drank beer and uh, I was eight. It was it was it was good. I, I liked it. Oh man, but, I I used to. I used to bring uh, wine to school. 
Um, no. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't have bottle openers, so I'd fucking, with a pen, I'd push the bottle cap, the bottle, uh, the cork in wine bottles, yeah. and then, then put them in liter bottles and bring them to school. And I would get okay. drunk in the girls' bathroom with, with another chick that I knew. And, uh, dude, we'd go back to class, like, so wasted. I'm, I'm so surprised, like, I mean, maybe, maybe we were so young. We were probably, like, 12, 13. Yeah. <laughs> that she's like, there's no way they're getting wasted in the bathroom. But, uh, yeah, we were, we were weird kids. I don't know what happened to that girl. I, she, she disappeared. Um, uh, she was a good friend. You know, we were, we were just friends. I mean, that was before I fucking even had hair in my nuts. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> She's probably some doctor somewhere now. <laughs> yeah, probably. I doubt it. If, if she did what I did at fucking 12 years old, I doubt it. But we won't get into that. Yeah. So, right. a few more closing things here, I guess. Oh, um, Grimnir's saying, yeah, pr- regulations, restrictions, and prohibitions are never good things. I-, I agree, you know, but smoking, I don't know. At least it says something. I mean, you know, we, we people need to, to, if you're going to smoke, smoke something that gets you fucking high. You know, cigarettes, cigarettes are crazy. But anyways, this is uh, some kind of weird shit. You know, this this kind of like lines up with with our our uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, recurring theme. So, you know Kevin Spacey, right? Yeah. All right. So he was accused of fucking some crazy sexual assault. Obviously, yes. Yeah. All right. Three people who have accused Kevin Spacey of sexual assault have now died. Wow. So, I guess the guy, this this most, this latest one, had been battling uh, alcoholism, and uh, which you know that's not a reason to commit suicide, but it uh, it makes sense, I guess. But I, I don't think that's the excuse that they're using. It's just kind of odd. Sorry, I had a distraction. There, there, there are these um, these June bugs. Like they just show up randomly. Like I don't know. And I, I feel bad that I had to drown them in a water bottle. But like, they just show up. These diamond back things. They just beep, and I had to put them in a water bottle. Anyways. So, three people who accused this guy. I didn't know Kevin Spacey was 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 so rich and powerful. I'm sh- I'm sure. And what's interesting about these 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 quote unquote suicides is that maybe they are suicides, and these people realize that all it takes is some clever social engineering to get someone to kill themselves, so you don't have to you know pull the trigger per se. You know. Yeah, I mean these people are are going to be troubled by by the the assault in the first place. They're not going to be happy. So once they 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 go to expose you, it's just a matter of, of you know finding someone who can get in and make them feel that way. Right. It's it's an interesting thing to think about. That fucking bug smelled weird, man. My fingers are fucking weird now. You kill it with the. Uh, <laughs> I put it in a water up? bottle. Like, fuck. <laughs> you hope you don't drink it. It no. might give you amazing powers. It might. Oh man. Shit. You might be the next Spider-Man. Or I bug might be man. the next Bug Man. I am Bug Man. You could be the next flea. Flea man. I am no, that's the flea man. Yeah, or the, the, <laughs> the tick. Flea, yeah. The tick. The tick. Yeah, yeah. That was a good show. Back yeah. in the day. Okay. 
Closing remarks. Let's see what we got here to close with because we're we're rounding up on the uh, the hour here, and oh. I've talked my face off enough, I guess. Kevin Spacey, Epstein. Oh yeah, here we go. LGBTQ bits. So, you know, we talked about quantum computing before. So, here's something that's pretty new. Uh, quantum teleportation has been reported in a Q-trit for the first time. Now, we, we, we've talked about qubits previously, which are two states. And uh, a Q-trit is quantum information based on three states. Which, man, that's fucking exponential right there, because that branches off into insanity pretty quick. So, uh, now, I mean, they did a teleportation with the qubits previously, um, but now, they've done it also with qtrits, which is pretty interesting. So, superposition is happening, and it's happening now. So, we're going to be able to, like, teleport places, motherfucker, right now. No, I don't know. That would be sweet. Yeah. I would love to see that in my lifetime, if it is even possible. I like the, the, uh, the interesting, well, like, Star Trek teleportation, like, the transporter pad. Yeah. In that scenario, it basically, it, it, converts you to to data and then reassembles you at the end of, of the of the stream which is that's like impossibly complicated like oh yeah but I mean it's it's theoretically possible yeah but I mean it, even it, like like hmm? a small like a not so elaborate like the fly with pods that that's fine too I mean Oh, How the fly. Cool. Jeff, yeah. Jeff Goldblum, man. Wow. Oh, that's a classic. You're bringing man. it back. Yep. Back to the old school. Old school pods. Well, I mean... About pods, teleportation pods, not iPods. <laughs> yeah, not iPods. Well, I, I think um, if they were to grasp superposition in a usable manner, that would actually kind of like negate the the theory of transporters in Star Trek because it wouldn't be necessary. It'd just be fucking just too complicated to even tackle. Wouldn't wouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a real fan of Gene Roddenberry's universe and, and that kind of innovation because that would that it, it's really driven a lot of scientific research as we are today. So um, it breaks it down to a logical formation of how it could be done. And it just says, this is how it happened. That's why I love Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie. You're a Trekkie. Mm-hmm. I'm a Trekkie. I'm, I'm on a Star Trek right now, in my brain. Nice. Take that trip. On LSD. No, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, they're stink bugs. Those those um, moose girls saying uh, the. I didn't know what they were. Like they, man, they smell weird. Like, damn, I've they come every once in a while. Like, uh, I see them outside. They're like diamond shaped. They're kind of big, but I never noticed that they smell before. Interesting stink bugs. Fuck those things. It's too cold out here and fucking the valley in California for this shit to be coming around. Bastards. Go back home. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could uh, put it in a bottle or some kind of uh, container. He's chilling in a fucking a... empty water bottle right now, the bastard. And yeah, I gotta go wash my hand like as soon as I'm done with this because man, it smells fucking weird. It smells like I can't even explain. It's not like stinky. It's like Grease. It's fucking pheromones. Maybe it's pheromones. Yeah, now I'm going to have, like, bugs attacking me, like, you smell hot. (laughs) Yeah, so you might want to shut the window before you sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
on that note, I guess that's all we've got to talk about in this uh, this hour. Friends, fiends, and murder machines. I know one of you is somewhere out there. I'm not going to out you. Don't worry. No, not really. Anyways, <laughs> this has been another episode of uh, 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 the shower hour because I've been in the shower the entire time. I do it naked. Shower hour. So hour of the power. Come back next week and we'll probably have um, a special guest that will make you want to, I don't know, do something cool or something, et cetera, et cetera. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Poopster, my friend? Yes, I am leaving the show. So, um, wait, those wait. listeners... Yes. What, like, as of today? Yeah, today's the end of the year. It is? Oh, I guess it is, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, uh, next week will be uh, 2020. This and, is news uh, to me. <laughs> I think it's it's kind of a long time coming. Um, yeah, I'm, it's going to be a new year, so I'm going to move on to new projects. Uh, maybe learn a new skill in, in the new year. Well, part of the New Year's resolution, so so I'm gonna reclaim this hour to do those things. Um, yeah, it's been pretty cool, man. I'm glad we had you on, and I'm I'm glad that I'm glad. Yeah, that, uh, it's been uh, a pleasure. Um, yeah, so you know, I will always be a guest if you invite me to be on your show. I could always be a guest, so that'd be cool. Awesome. We'll have you back on. Uh, as a guest, because I love having guests to bounce things off go. of, because I love chaos. So Yeah. All right. Well, my friends, say goodbye to Poopster, because this is going to turn into to Prince Power Hour, apparently. Yes. Um, uh, the, the show will be renamed to Prince Power Hour. Yes. yes. Well, we'll figure it out. It'll be cool. Yeah, just Don't worry. I'm yeah. going to continue throwing it out there with you guys. So, Right on. Keep All on right. trucking, as they call it. Keep on trucking, motherfucker. <laughs> yep. Find me some homemade gravy. <laughs> gravy. Nobody knows that song, but he doesn't even say that, but I, I want him to be saying that. No. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> That's irrelevant. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, that's it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll see you next week. Peace. Peace out. Peace and chicken grease. Chicken grease is delicious. Fucking chicken grease. Now I'm hungry.